Here we are. Be careful of the sand in the desert, bugs. The combination can be deadly. Thanks, Mohan. If you see anything valuable, come sell it to me, okay? Yeah, you're not going to be selling him anything. Hey guys, welcome to part four of my Frogger's Journey to the Forgotten Relic playthrough. And here we are in the pyramids. Kind of dusty, huh? No, not the dog. Anyway, this first room here just has a bunch of curio in it. And like the raging klepto I am, I go ahead and pick it all up. Of course, the first enemies of the pyramid are these scarab beetles. Who move at a regular speed some of the time, but then at other times they like to open their wings and flap around, which increases their speed, and it's pretty much impossible to predict when they're going to do that. So yeah, those guys can get pretty fucking annoying. Alright, now here we have the sand falls. Pretty much these things are pushing you in a certain direction if you just sit still. But you can actually jump into them. I mean, jump against them. My bad. And you're going to need to to get through some of the later parts. These things, of course, will push you off the platform that you're on and into the pit if you're standing in front of them. For some reason, the ones on this side, this side, don't work. I'm not sure why. And yeah, do you see now why I have the long jump equipped pretty much at all times? Because you pretty much need it because of this level design. The level design pretty much has you jumping across these small gaps with the long jump a lot. And that's why I pretty much always have it equipped when I play this game. So you can jump against these. Again, you're going to need to. And yep, the blue fruit makes its first appearance in a level here. Like I said back in part one, I think it was. Uh, the blue fruit is the equivalent of taking a hit, picking it up. It's the equivalent of taking a hit. You lose one heart if you do it, so don't do it. It's pretty much the equivalent of the poison mushroom in Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, which I actually have a finished playthrough of on my computer, and I think that might be the next LP I do. I, the one, next one I commentate on it. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Luckily, even though the blue fruit hops like that, you don't collect it if you're a space above it. So that's good. Yeah, these blue scorpions, unlike the uh, beetles, they never change their speed. They are, are always moving at the same speed, but it can be pretty annoying to get their patterns now. Probably even more annoying than the beetles, to be honest. Probably because there's usually more than one going in that same pattern. But yeah. Here we have another sandfall puzzle. Correction it. No wait, correction, it's actually a platform. I was gonna say platform bit. Yeah. But here we have the pit of the pyramids. See it's annoying it see it's pretty annoying to get the pattern down of those scorpions. Yeah, I really didn't mean to pick up those bananas. Just wasted them. So yeah. Unfortunately though, this that's the only time you're gonna see the uh, pyramid pit. Not just because I don't fall down it again, but with this and pretty much the rest of the pits in the game, every time I fall down one I'm cutting them out. Especially when I get to Eric Mormese's mansion, because good lord, the amount of times I fall down a pit in that level. Trust me, you're going to be glad I cut them here. I don't know how I got hit there. That was bullshit. 
Oh yeah. Basically with these little ram things I like to usually I like to use the long jump to get past them. Oh damn, I'm down to one heart. Luckily map right there. Now we have snakes shooting fireballs. Easy to get past. Don't know if you can hear that, but that's my mom talking in the background. Ooh, that was close. And we have a relic. Another relic for the yo part. Well, Grandpa wasn't here, but I must be on the right track. What the weather? What the fuck? It's raining and stormy now. What the hell? What's going on? Please stay in town. It's safe from town. Please be safe. Oh yeah, something to mention though. Unlike when the bear attacks, unlike when the earthquake happened, you can actually go to other levels during the storm. They tell you to stay in the town during the storm, but you can actually go to other levels during the storm. This can't be, this can't be happening! What's going on? Nothing, Father. And he basically just keeps telling you that to you advance the story. Sounds like Mohan's hiding something. So you can get into clues. I need to get out of the rain. Maybe I'll go talk to Ruby and put one time. Actually, yeah, I do, because we're gonna save. Alright, there we go. What's going on? Nothing. See, he just keeps telling you that until you advance the story. I saw a great darkness come from the river. Something's happened. Of course something's happened. Let's go to the library. Like to make a tangerial donation? See, yeah, the, the price of his information increases as the game goes on. He basically said that that crest that we picked up, it calms the leviathan of the river. Should go talk to Mohan. Yeah, this is actually one of those few instances where you don't need to talk to the guy in the townhouse to advance the story. Okay, legend says that the crest seals a terrible sea beast that'll arrive with a million clouds. But it's just a legend. I don't believe it. I'm sure that this storm is caused by something else. Besides, you're the one who took the crest. Well, fuck you, buddy. Uh, actually, kind of sold it. Yeah, you're the one who sold it, so we can't get it back. What the fuck are you blaming me for? Just a silly legend. Oh, uh, really? Okay, the only way to take you up the river in this weather is whoever. You must hurry, Father. And yeah, I'm gonna be calling them random names like whoever and that guy, because I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. What's shit? Oh, and you also can't go up to Dusty's during the storm, because apparently he nailed his door shut. This is the guy that tells you. He only, he only does the burr line if you talk to him personally. He doesn't do the burr and if you try to go up to Dusty's. So, yep. Let's go beat up this big fish. What's with the storm? It's getting ridiculous. I can't fly anywhere now. What a storm. There hasn't been a storm like this in years. I haven't seen the water this angry in a while. You didn't remove anything from the river, did you? The crest? You fool! Some things are where they are for a reason. Probably was causing the storm. Take you up the river. Oh, cool, don't got to pay him. Dirty be rocked. The storm is getting stronger. See, he's just a big old anglerfish. If only you could reach those spiky fruits and make a great but Grr. What was up with that? Just grr, the period. He wasn't he isn't even shouting like the bear was. Just... But yeah, here's a. But yeah, Frogger said you can start hopping and his here's why. It's an auto scrolling boss. Basically what you have to do is you have to use the Mega Claw to hit those spiky fruits to knock them into the river and you gotta hope like hell that Oops, didn't mean to do that. Anyway, you gotta hope like hell that the Leviathan is under the spiky fruit when it drops, because that's what you gotta do. You gotta hit the Leviathan in the head with the spiky fruit three times in order to beat it. Another three, and another reason you want to keep moving is if you stay still too long, or if you stay in the same row too long, Leviathan will stop and shoot you with a projectile that I 
I believe is unavoidable. I mean, I've never found a way to avoid this projectile without pretty much just popping in the water, which would have me take a hit anyway. And I don't really want to start the boss over again. See, yeah. I mean, I know it looks like I'm not trying to avoid the projectile, but trust me, I have tried and tried and tried and fucking tried to avoid that projectile and I can't do it. There is no way. So I just take the hit. I mean, he doesn't do it that often. It's not like he does it often enough to like kill you. But still. Alright, that's two hits. Yeah, this isn't nerve-wracking at all. This isn't Hopping across, hopping across all these thin fucking platforms as fast as I can. This isn't nerve wracking. Jeez. All right, there's the third hit. This fish is done. Oh, memo. Eat some weird things. Damn right. <laughs> Why the hell would he eat a memo? That reminds me of the story of Pinocchio when that shark ate Pinocchio and Geppetto. You know what I mean? For whatever reason. Oh, back to Leona. <clears throat> yeah. Thank goodness the rain stopped. I was worried about you, you know. Look what I found. Memo in the fish's belly. He coughed it up after I beat him. Seriously, what the hell? <laughs> Or at least it's better than Frogger actually physically going inside the Leviathan and retrieving the memo, or actually cutting him open to get the memo. Oh well, back to Dusty's. You know, for a door that was nailed shut, it seems to look pretty fine. Look pretty good. Looks like it was made for your part. Install it for 25 Curio. Well, it's a good thing I got a lot of Curio in the pyramids. I can install this new upgrade to the OPAR. There we go. There we go, to work now. The Rock Buster. Be careful with that, it's got enough power to bust down a wall. Yeah, the problem with that being that you can only break down specific walls. Huh, apparently there's a relic that can. Let people swim. Be getting that later in the game. Yeah, Frogger needs an orb on his back to swim. Found a container of life. AKA a max life up. Sell for 100 curio. Sure, I'll take it. Yep, now I have five hearts of health instead of four. Yeah, basically, now is the point in the game when Mohan starts to sell you stuff, but unfortunately, it isn't like a a shop in an like an RPG or something like that. Where there's plenty of stuff to buy every time you go in there. He, you can just go in there at random points in the game and he just has one item for sale and that's it. It could be a piece of furniture for your grandpa's house, it could be a max life up, you never know. But yeah. Oh yeah, something else to mention. There's also a rug that goes in grandpa's house and you get it from the family that we saw earlier with the mother and the two little kids but I forgot to get it in this playthrough so yeah I get every other piece of furniture in the playthrough but I don't get that one. so Leona's talking about going to Atlantis let's see what the nurse says Culture of water is magnificent. What I found here is very similar to the Atlantean fairy tale I heard from that guy. The statues of warping places take you wherever you want. Monsters seem to fiercely guard the statue of the entrance. Following them is how I found the beautiful, this beautiful room. Oh okay, yeah, by the way, that's the last memo in the game. I mean, we're far, we're far away from the last level in the game, but that's the last memo in the game. Anyway, I'm going to be backtracking with the Rockbuster in Part 5. See you then.